it's Miss Hill with Math to Heart, and I am so happy to see you all again. Thanks for tuning in. I'm hoping that you are keeping up with your reading and with your math assignments, and here is a math assignment that you can enjoy and love as Math to Heart brings math into your heart with art. Okay, so our second lesson is called Lying Lines. Okay, now, Lying lines, remember the word lying can have two meanings. So we're going to be talking about that. It's called a multiple, multiple meaning word. So we're going to talk about that multiple meaning later. But I just want to remind you that if you haven't had some of the stuff in this lesson, or if you're a kindergartner and you're like, what in the world is she talking about? It's okay because it's going to come back around and you'll still be able to do the activity. So stay with it because that's the whole point in Math to Heart is that I create a place where we can use the same vocabulary, we can learn the same things that we're going to be learning in fourth grade in kindergarten. Kind of like perpendicular lines right here on my shirt, okay? Perpendicular lines are super important for kindergartners to know, but it's not a standard until fourth grade. So stay tuned and we're going to learn all about how lines sometimes lie to you. So our learning target for this unit is to understand how points, lines, line segments, rays, and angles work together to create shapes. And of course, we know those shapes can then go together to create all kinds of art. But like I, I said, I'm teaching you the math standards through art to bring math into your heart. So we're gonna do a little math and a little art together to help us understand how these things work together to create shapes. So if I was going to put this in kid terms and not adult terms or the terms that we're given when we are teachers and they tell us what you have to learn, I would do it something like this. I can identify, use, draw, and make points, line segments, rays, angles, parallel, perpendicular, and intersecting lines to draw and to compare and explain shapes. So here's one of our favorite songs, so get excited, get up. This is our lines, points, ray segments. It's going to be fun, so get up, follow me, do the motions. Motions are important, especially I do like this, but this finger is an angle. And then if you do this, and with the fist, that's a point, okay? And there's another point, all right? So pay attention because those really matter. Again, I'm also going to put the video into the links below so that you can just watch the video and not watch me dance and sing. But you know, I had a good time with it. And I hope you did too. So let's review, okay? The smallest thing in that, sorry, in that song was a point. So in geometry, which is in fact the study of shapes, which is what you're doing even in kindergarten, which is crazy, you could be doing what your high school um, sibling is doing. Geometry, the smallest thing in geometry is the thing that helps form all other parts of geometry, the lines, the shapes, and everything, and that is a point. Now, a point looks basically like a period, okay? It's just a little tiny circle. We label them so that we know because there are thousands and millions and millions of points everywhere. We label them with capital letters so that we know that if we're talking about a certain point, I can say point A, 
and know that that's what I'm talking about. When you have two or more points in the same path, they can connect to each other to create a line that will keep going indefinitely. That's why we put the arrows on either end. Those arrows show that that line keeps on going. We've also learned that when a line starts at one point and then keeps continuing in one direction, that is called a ray. It has a starting point and it keeps going through another point all the way and keeps going. I always kind of think of it like the sun and its rays. All the rays of the sun start at a point and then we draw them going out and keep going until they hit something. So basically that's what a ray is. And let's not forget my students' most favorite element of geometry, and that is the line segment. We discovered that when we're walking down the hallway, we are not really getting into a line. Nope. Shh. We are getting into a line segment, okay? And when we were in school, I would tell my fourth graders and third graders to correct their teachers very nicely and say, um, Miss Benton, we are not really getting into a line. We're getting into a line segment because it has a beginning point and an ending point. And if they could tell that, I was so excited and so was their teacher. But when you walk in a line, you're really walking in a line segment because it has a beginning point and an ending point. The funny thing about line segments is that we don't usually see them the way we learn about them. We never see a line with a point on both ends. That would kind of be weird unless, of course, you were connecting the dots. But when we see them in regular space on our kitchen cabinets or on a picture frame or on the windows that we're trapped behind right now, we don't see them as a line with a beginning and an ending point. They just look like a line without any arrows, just going back and forth on one end. So let's think about this. Is this a line segment? Look at your notes if you happen to have them. If you don't, you can Google it if you want to. Go ahead. Have fun. Try to find out how a line segment is defined. What is a line segment? Oh, so a line segment is a line that has a beginning and an ending point. Okay, so can we say this line begins here and it ends over there, right? So therefore it has a beginning and ending point but it doesn't have points. Sometimes we don't see those points. So it is a line segment because there is a starting point and there is an ending point. That's what makes it a line segment. So our lesson is called Lying Lines. Speaking of lying lines, lying, like I said earlier, can be a multiple meaning word. It can mean to not tell the truth, like I'm sure several of us have gotten in trouble for this weekend or week or, however long we've been out. Anyway, but it can also mean to be laying down on the ground, like horizontal, okay, like snorizontal. Okay? Line segments, lines and rays don't just lay horizontal. They can lay lots of different ways. So therefore, they're lying lines. They're lines that are lying in different ways. That's why I decided to name this presentation, Lying Lines. Lines can lay flat, like the middle of an H. These are called horizontal lines. I jokingly call these snorizontal lines because they're the way we lay down when we go to sleep. And if you look at the H on the PowerPoint, you can see my little dude laying down in the middle of his bed. He's got the headboard and he's got the footboard and he's laying down like the middle of an H. That's what horizontal lines are. They're also from the horizon where the earth seems to meet the sky. Okay, a lot of us can see that over water, at the beach, maybe on some farmland. You can see where it looks like the sky is crashing into the land. That is called the horizon and it goes from side to side and that's where the word horizontal comes from. Lines can also go straight up and down. These are called vertical lines. I can remember these because they start with a V. Okay, so if I take my V, make a V with me, all right? And I have my V like just like this. And if I shut my hands, I have a line that goes up and down. So I remember vertical 
because B starts with the B, shut it, and it goes up and down. Because a line that is vertical goes up and down. So on my, my shirt I have on, if you'll notice, I have perpendicular written two different ways. One is in a vertical way going up and down, and one is in a horizontal way that goes side to side. Lines can also be on a slip. These are called diagonal lines. The beginning of a diagonal line usually begins at the top and goes to the bottom, okay? Beginning of diagonal rhymes with slide and side. So I think of this as a slide going from side to side, okay? Diagonal lines go from the top to the, of one side to the bottom of the other side. So they're like diagonal lines. So we have horizontal lines that go side to side like snorizontal. We have vertical lines that go up and down the way a B does when it shuts. And then we have diagonal lines the way a line slants to the side so it's like a slide. All right, so let's talk about how these lines can go together with my little number rock video. I'm so excited. So this favorite video. I'm going to put the link in so you can watch it if you want to without me dancing, or you can get a video. You probably don't really think about it anyway. You'll so find lines that are perpendicular around the rectangles perimeter. Well, let's break it down even simpler than make rectangles in particular. Parallel lines never meet, intersecting lines make V's. Perpendicular lines meet at 90 degrees. Put your hands in the air with me. Parallel, intersecting, perpendicular, irrectangular. Step, step, step. Get ready for your investigating tool. Uh -huh. now, now let's talk, talk about, about detecting. detecting. If two lines are intersecting, it's the term that, that we select. If at any point two lines connect. Parallel lines never meet. Intersecting lines make V's. Perpendicular lines meet at 90 degrees. Put your hands in the air with me. Parallel, intersecting, perpendicular, irrectangular. That those two lines are parallel Like these telephone wires up above the street Parallel lines will never meet Parallel lines never meet Intersecting lines make these Perpendicular lines meet at 90 degrees Put your hands in the air with me Parallel, intersecting, perpendicular, irrectangular or two straws or a fork, two forks, something that's straight like a line. I want you to get two of them and we're going to experiment with the way those lines can be together without being connected from end to end just to make a longer line. Like how can those lines interact with each other? Remember interact is a big word for you know work together, talk to each other, whatever. How can they work together to create something? So the first thing I realized is that the, they can lay side by side, okay? And so they'll never touch. I mean, they have to stay the same distance apart at the end as at the other end. Because if they start to slant, eventually they're going to crash into each other. They lay side by side and they never touch. Parallel lines, they lay side by side and they never touch. Those are called parallel lines. Use your pencils to see if you can make a different way of laying them without making a longer line and try to cross them in some way. They can cross in any way to form T's, X's, or V's. These are called intersecting lines. 
Intersecting lines can cross in any way. They can make a perfect T. They can make a perfect L, but they can also cross and make huge V's and little V's and sideways V's. Any way these straight lines cross, they are intersecting. And then there's a special kind of intersecting line. I wonder if you might could think about it. What could it be? Hmm. I wonder. Oh, yes. There's perpendicular lines. Use two pencils to see different ways you can lay them. Remember, we're not making a long one. I want you to try to cross them. Cross them so that they form a perfect T or an L or a plus sign. That said, so they'll form right or square or 90 degree angles. They might look something like this. These are called perpendicular lines. Now these perpendicular lines, yes, they are intersecting because they cross into each other. But they're special intersecting lines because where they cross at forms a 90 degree angle. It forms a square angle. In other words, the kind of angle we would find in the corner of a square or a rectangle. These are perpendicular lines. And that's what my shirt is showing right here. And then the dots are showing the right angles. So get ready for my pair of lines chant. If you've had it before, remember you have to stay with me. So first of all, let me just remind you of the lyrics. They're really simple. Parallel, parallel, perpendicular, perpendicular, intersecting, intersecting. I'm going to throw the pictures in there for you. And now it's time for the chant. So my kids, my students, remember I'm in charge of the speed, not you. Don't get ahead of me at home. All right, stay with me. So here we go. Ready? Parallel, parallel, perpendicular, perpendicular, intersecting, intersecting, 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 parallel, perpendicular, intersecting. Oh my gosh. I'm okay. I'm okay. So. There's our parallel line chant, okay? So when you're trying to remember, I've seen kids taking tests, going like this. That's awesome. It's a great way to memorize the way lines can go together. So let's review. Lines can lay side by side so they will never touch. These are called parallel lines. Parallel lines never meet. They can cross, lines can cross forming acute and obtuse angles. Angles are coming up in our next lesson. So they can form V's. These are called intersecting lines. And finally, we have those special intersecting lines that cross forming right angles or square angles or 90 degree angles. So we have our three types of lines. Parallel, intersecting, perpendicular. All right. So now we're going to do some really cool art using parallel lines. The important thing you have to remember is that when we're doing this, remember parallel lines never meet. They have to stay the same distance away from the bottom as they do from the top. So it's really important that you pay attention to that and be careful while you're drawing. You might want to get a straight edge. A straight edge could be a ruler or it could be the side of a book or Anything that you can just draw a straight edge on. Okay, don't get something gonna mess up or that you're gonna draw on because you shouldn't be drawing on it. You should be drawing on a piece of paper. So you just need a paper, some sort of a straight edge, and color crayons, markers, paints, whatever you want to do to finish your piece of art. Okay, so you got what you need. And for our parallel line art, I want you to follow me as I go through step by step how to create parallel art. You heard it right. I said parallel. Not parallel. 
parallel. It's a really cool and one of my kids' most famous, favorite art activities, and you can get super creative with our parallel okay, art. Okay, so for our, our, our art today, first thing we're going to do is we're going to fold our paper or partition our paper into halves or quarters. Um, this makes it easier to draw, and it makes it easier for you to kind of stay where I'm at. Um, I always flip my paper over so I can review my unit fractions and label each part. So each part is one out of the two parts. So each fraction, the top fraction has one over two, and this bottom fraction has one over two because a unit fraction always has a one on top. Okay? And then when you put them together, one half plus one half is two halves. And whenever you have the same number as the numerator and the denominator, that equals one. So I always do this with every art piece I do. And that way I'm always reviewing how holes are divided into parts. So I'm drawn with a marker. That's so you can see it. I do not recommend you drawing with a marker. I recommend you drawing with a pencil so you can erase. So as you see, I started on the bottom half and I drew a U. It took up pretty much the whole bottom half and stopped at the halfway line. And then I kind of added two parallel lines at the bottom as a neck. And then I'm trying to find my middle line. So I'm going ahead and I'm actually dividing it into quarters. And that said that my face will be symmetrical. Remember that symmetrical means that it's the same on both sides. So. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my eyes. So I'm trying to make sure I don't get too far up or too far down. And one of the ways that I teach my students to draw eyes is to start with a smile, like just a curved smile for the bottom of the eye and then a frown for the top of the eye. And it takes practice. It takes practice learning how to do it. And then of course, inside my eye, we have two circles. Okay, you have your iris, which gives you the color of your eye. And you know, my eyes are hazel. Um, and then you have the middle black, looks like a dot, but it's actually a hole that allows light to go into your eyes so you can see. You see I'm adding some eyebrows, just going up above and kind of staying the same distance away as my eyes. And I'm using our five nose. If you haven't done it before, you can do your five and erase the line at the top and it makes a perfect nose. And that's just a simple mouth. Now, since we're doing parallel lines, I'm gonna use some parallel lines to make some eyelashes because mine's a girl. Yours does not have to be a girl, of course. Um, you can make it into a boy, you can make it into a monster, you can make it into whatever you want. This is where you are going to be able to get really creative when you start to color and decorate your piece of art. So what I'm going to start with is that middle line, okay? And I've got that line, and again, this is parallel art, so that means I'm about to make all of this hair look like parallel lines, which is why it's called parallel line art. Okay? So if you watch, I'm basically just taking the U and what goes up is about the same as the U. And you see I'm not using a straight edge. You probably want to use one. I'm having to kind of draw at a weird angle. So right now I've got three parallel lines, vertical parallel lines. I'm going to go ahead and add some more vertical parallel lines in there going up and down. And again, it's not absolutely perfect because I'm not using a straight edge. And then I'm going to go down to the bottom after I've got these parallel lines and I'm going to draw some parallel lines going across the bottom. So. I've already got one done with my fold, and here we go. I'm going to try to keep them so that it looks like they're running behind it, but that's sometimes hard. Just do the best that you can. Remember, try to keep them the same distance apart so they'll stay parallel lines and not end up intersecting somewhere down the road. And I guess these really aren't really lines, these are line segments because they have a beginning point and they have an ending point and that's the definition of a line segment. A line keeps going and going and going and never stops. 
let's hope this hair does not keep going and going and going and never stops. So I have drawn vertical going up and down parallel lines. I have drawn horizontal parallel lines and now I'm going to draw a diagonal parallel line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with one main line that goes from the corner of my hair to the corner of the paper. And then I am just going to eyeball my parallel lines on each side of that main line. And that way they're diagonal parallel lines. And I'm going to do the same thing. And I almost messed up. I went from this corner. But I remember I want to go from the outside corner to the inside corner of the head. And then go ahead and add in my parallel lines. So that they're all diagonal parallel lines. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's okay if you make mistakes. That's why God made erasers. And if you make a mistake and you weren't using an erasable thing, then that's okay. So here we have our parallel line picture. And we're going to get ready to color it. When you're coloring your parallel line art, you want to think about what kind of colors you want to use. If you want to go with a theme. I've had people, you know, create... Um, University of Georgia parallel line art. I've had um, people create monsters or Avengers or mermaids or whatever. I'm going to kind of stick with the mermaid theme um, and I'm going to like add some tattoos and stuff to her. This is your art so you can get as creative as you want. Just make sure that you um, have fun. I would love to see how your piece of art turned out, okay? So this is how my piece of art turned out. I kind of did a little mermaid kind of theme and gave a little eye makeup and tattoo stuff too. I had kids turn them into University of Georgia um, parallel art. I've also seen Florida State and then put FSU across it. I've seen people do Albert Einstein and make it all white and do big glasses and a mustache and everything. And it, 
it's just so much fun. So be creative. I hope you were. If not, remember, you can always do it again. And you, it's a simple activity, but it ends up looking so cool the more ways you did it. So I want to thank you so much for being with me today. And I hope that you enjoyed our math to heart lesson on lying lines. And I want to thank West Bainbridge Elementary School for having me. And I miss all my WBE peeps. I love you. And I'm air hugging from afar. And check out more lessons from Math to Heart coming soon.